Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and this video here is a follow-up to my recent top board games on the Nintendo Switch. If you haven't seen that one, please check it out on the link above. This video will focus on some of the best alternative board games on the Nintendo Switch. Those games that aren't actually based on existing real-life board games, but if you did want to expand your collection in the genre, then these are the games that you need to be checking out. So without further ado, here are the top 10 alternative board games on the Nintendo Switch. Now the first entry is a bit of an odd one as it's a video game based on a board game which itself was based on video games. That game is Super Dungeon Tactics and is in at number 10 and this series is based on the Super Dungeon Explore series of board games. Clearly that original board game was inspired by Japanese RPGs like the Skya and this turn based dungeon crawler sees you choose from a number of unique heroes with different unique abilities and play for a series of quests rolling dice to combat the bad guys and grabbing loot to power up your party. Whilst there's nothing inherently wrong with Super Dungeon Tactics, in fact it's a game I should really enjoy as a fan of these sort of turn-based strategy games, it just hasn't grabbed me due to a slightly budget feel and a few technical issues, but if you can pick it up on sale then it's probably worth it. Taking Game Workshop's Warhammer 40k Universe and putting it into a video game isn't a unique idea and the video games tend to have been more misses than hits in this series. Space Wolf on the Nintendo Switch is unfortunately another miss here at number 9. If you're a big Warhammer fan or just like turn-based strategy games then this may be worth a look if you can pick it up on a sale. Combining turn-based gameplay for your squad along with card deck building mechanics to grant different attacking abilities is a nice idea, it's just a shame the execution isn't very good. The Switch certainly has a half stone shaped hole in its library right now, but it hasn't stopped a series of games stepping up to attempt to fill it. The most worthy contender is number 8 on this list, and that's Eternal from Die Wolf Digital, which does look a lot like that giant game from Blizzard. Customise your decks and take them through progressively harder story modes, draft modes, tournament modes and more. With a huge number of cards to collect and customise your decks with, and cross-platform accounts, meaning cards you may have bought on the Steam, iOS or even the Switch version of the game, will all work on each other. Number 7 is an ambitious game that tries to take three tabletop-like mechanics and meld them into a single experience and so nearly pulls it off in spectacular fashion. The first unique thing about Thea The Awakening is a Slavic mythological world that the game is based in, which isn't really a world we see that often. The main part of the game sees you exploring a randomised hex-based board, finding materials and quests to take on. Combat is handled using a simple but engaging card game and the story elements of the game take the form of a choose your own adventure style book most popular back in the 1980s. Whilst none of the three elements are outstanding on their own, the way they work together certainly make for an engaging board game style and that I would personally recommend. For the King takes the number 6 spot and is a game that takes traditional tabletop RPGs and adds a nice roguelike twist helping every game feel unique. You start by creating a party of 3 heroes with either local, online or AI players and head out to avenge the King's death. Movement, combat and encounters are handled by dice rolls though you can mitigate a lot of the randomness with your abilities or by spending focus points to grant automatic successes for some of the rolls. This game definitely has the feel of something like a Mage Knight board game and was one of my favourite games for a good amount of time on the Switch. One other awesome feature worth noting is that online games with other humans can be saved and resumed at a later date, which really should be a staple for all games like this. The most recent release on the list right now at number 5 and that is Tharsis. This game has you travelling to Mars to investigate a mysterious discovery but during your 10 week journey your ship and crew have to be kept healthy and functional and this is where the dice rolling comes into play. Each crew member has a limited number of dice and events that randomly occur on the ship have to be cleared by rolling a target number depending on the severity of the event. You can also use areas of your ship to regain dice, health or carry out special projects. Whilst this is a pure dice rolling game, meaning a lot of luck is involved, there are also enough strategic choices for the player to make which keep things really engaging and the excellent presentation and low price makes this an easy recommendation for all board game fans. 
Now, one of the more pure board game experiences on the list now at number four, and that is Mario Party. Even though the basic roll and move nature of the board game part is fairly rudimentary, it's the mid-turn challenges that really make Mario Party a fun experience for all ages gathered around the TV. These simple little mini-games are a way of earning more coins and ultimately the stars that will determine the winner of the game. I first played this with my daughter when she was five and she's loved it ever since. Probably not a game for the hardcore strategic board gamer, but if you have non-gaming family and friends, it's a simple game that anyone can have fun with. In at number three now, and that is the deck building indie game phenomenon, Slay the Spire. Starting with a basic deck of attack and defense cards, you take your chosen class of hero through a journey up a randomized spire of rooms where you will face a number of monsters, merchants and random encounters. Combat is handled by spending a finite number of action points to play cards which will either damage your foes or protect you from harm and after each round of combat is resolved, assuming you're victorious, a new card will be added to your deck. You will have other chances to buy cards or remove weaker ones as you go on in a familiar deck building game fashion. Fans of something like Dominion will feel at home with Slay the Spire and it's just one of the very best games on the Nintendo Switch and is an absolute must own. At number two is a long running video game franchise that was eventually turned into a board game due to its close mechanics to popular 4X games and that is of course Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Civ VI as it's known allows you to build a civilization from an intrepid handful of explorers with mud huts through hundreds of years of evolution as you aim to launch rockets into space. Its multi-layered complex systems involve scientific research, diplomacy, trading and war but it's just the one more turn nature of its turn-based gameplay that has had players hooked for so many years. If you really enjoy heavy, complex board games, then Civ 6 is bound to be a game you will enjoy and stretch your grey matter. So we get to the number one place, and I've decided to give that to Armello. Whilst Civ 6 is a beautifully large and complex game that you could play for thousands of hours over a lifetime, I feel for a list based on board games, Armello is the more deserving of top spot. This is a digital board game with an original design and sees you taking control of one of the oversized forest animals that are beautifully drawn and animated in a game world that has similarly stunning looks. You play the game by moving around the randomized hex board, taking on quests and trying to build up one of four stats to be in the best position to take over the dying king at the center of the board after 10 turns. If you come into contact with an enemy, combat is handled by a cool little dice based mini game. Add in multiplayer, unlockable characters and the option to expand the game with DLC and you have a game that's going to be fresh for some time to come. One of my all time favourite games on the Switch without question and one that any board game fan should absolutely own. So there you go, that's the top 10 alternative board games on the Nintendo Switch. Remember to check out my top 10 board games list. I uh, posted a couple of days ago. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a thumbs up if you did. And please drop me a comment below what you think of these alternative board games. Have I missed any off? Have I put them in the wrong order? Please let me know below what your favourites are. Please subscribe if you're new here. Would really appreciate that. But with that said, I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks for watching everyone and bye bye.